user environment where more than one user logs on to the same computer, there has to be a way of separating all of those users from each other. Their wallpaper, their custom backgrounds, their favorites, their all the things that a users expect for themselves have to be somehow magically kept apart from everyone else who logs on to that PC. And that is what profiles are all about. So let's dive in and begin the understanding of profiles in Windows. Let's take a look at some of our learning goals. We want to make sure that we understand the concepts of user profiles. We want to understand and identify elements of a typical profile. And last but not least, we want to successfully migrate user data and user profiles. We do not want to lose user data. So we're going to find some tools that are out there that will help us take profiles and user information and move it to a new computer or even upgrade it to a new operating system. The idea of a multi-user operating system is very critical. Back in the days of Windows 95, going way back in time to the Windows 95, Windows 98 world, Microsoft kind of glued in this ability to have multi-users on their operating systems. But as Microsoft launched its Windows XP operating system and some of its older NT versions, they seriously from the ground up built in multi-user capability. So users in the Windows operating systems, the serious ones that we're using today, Windows XP, Windows 7, Windows 8, provide a total separation of users on the operating system. This is done with profiles. So application data is separated. Documents are separated. Screensavers, wallpaper, all of this are maintained in separate profiles by the operating system. So what are profiles? A user profile is a collection of folders and registry data that describes a user's environment when the user logs on to a client computer. We're going to find out that it's a very complex series of folders, files, and most importantly, registry a registry hive that is going to be loaded into memory and all of that combined when the user logs on is going to provide a profile. Now Windows Vista got a lot of bad press but Microsoft made some really significant changes in Vista. Not only did they make major renovations in security but they also made for the first time a major change in the structure of the Windows profile hierarchy and system. So we'll take a look at that. That's going to impact Windows 7, Windows 8, and other future operating systems. Here are some of the major changes that Vista brought to profiles. First of all, they added better security. They actually created a special location just for applications that are sus suspect or, or things that were not as comfortable uh, about. So we created a special folder in our profile that allowed applications to run, say in our browser, that we really don't trust. We really want to keep them very isolated and away from the rest of the operating system. Microsoft also flattened the directory structure of the profile starting with Vista. They also created some new changes so that roaming was better. We'll talk about roaming profiles. They also added some new folders that just made sense as we move down the road with changing technology. They added some new Active Directory group policy objects so that allows the administrator from Active Directory to better manage and control the profiles on the desktop. It also created backward compatibility and we'll take a look at that as we move forward. All right, so what's inside a profile? A profile is a very complex set of folders, files, and registry hives. So let's start with, it's first of all, it's a hierarchy of folders that store icons, shortcuts, files, startup applications, and other application data and settings. So first of all, understand that a profile is a very well-designed, set of folders and files. Another key element of a profile is a registry hive. 
That means it's a registry key that's saved as a file on the hard drive. It stores user-defined desktop settings, application settings, persistent network connections, printer connections, and so on. It is the magic that makes the profile work, as we'll see later on. So I'm pointing, actually you can see into user.dat is actually the name of the registry hive that's loaded into RAM every time you log on. That's what makes your profile come alive. So where is the profile? The profile for Vista to Windows 8 its location is found under the C users folder, special folder in the C root directory. In XP, it was in the C root documents and settings directory. So those are the two locations that all user profiles are stored for Vista and above and XP. This is a Windows 8 machine and you can see here is the location for all the user's profiles. Every user that logs on, all of their profile information is gonna be saved under this strategic folder called users. If this was XP, it would be documents and settings. Now here's a typical profile in Windows 8. You can see it will look, when you start looking at your Windows 7 boxes, uh, it will look very, very similar. You can see the registry file, anti-user.dat, and the various folders that make up the registry, the profile for this user. Keep in mind, I have changed the view of Explorer and my change allows me to look at hidden system and read only files. So if you look at your profile, many of these files and directories are not gonna be visible. But if you go into Explorer and change so that you can view both hidden system and read-only files, you'll be able to see everything that you see here on this slide. So let's take a look at a profile. I'm gonna open up my home computer, and this is my Explorer view. And notice, if you want to change that view, you can go into View, Options, pull this up. If you wanna look at things that are normally hidden, you're going to have to go in here and change some of these options. So I can hide protected files. I'm actually going to leave them unchecked uh, so that I can see everything and show you in this demonstration. But normally you have to go in and make these modifications. Make sure you apply if you want to see them. So I'm gonna open up my C drive. And here again, you can see the users folder. This is the location of all profiles. When I click on it, you, we can see uh, the various folders that represent various profiles and we'll look at some special folders and this one right here is my logon so this is actually my profile and you can see the profile structure down here you can see my nt-user.dat file this is a critical registry hive this is loaded into ram every time i log on and this is what makes all the profile work uh, the rest of it is a structured hierarchical design of folders and files that Microsoft uses to make the profile work and make sure that application data, user-specific information is stored and used when you log on. We're gonna introduce four types of profiles. So let's talk about them. There are the most common and the one that you're going to be seeing most both at school and at home are gonna be local profiles. Those are the default maintained profiles on each computer's hard drive for every user. Especially in a school classroom that you're working in, you literally have hundreds of profiles sometimes on a classroom PC that's shared by many classes, many people. So that's very, very common. And that's what you use at home. Now there's another roaming, what's called a roaming profile. And this allows a domain controller, allows a user account to take the profile and sync it to a file server. So it will roam wherever the user logs on, whatever computer, this, the master copy, which is on a file server, will be synced down to the local logged on computer. There's also a mandatory profile, which is simply a roaming profile that cannot be changed by a user. I really want you to pay attention to this. This is the temporary user profile. This is the one where you're gonna be called because the user is about to have a fit. 
None of their documents are there. Uh, their pictures are gone. Their applications won't work. So a temporary user profile is indication of a problem. There has been a problem. So what happens is, is the operating system for some reason sees a profile on the PC. And when the user logs on, there's a problem with the user logging on and attaching them to their original profile. And because there's an issue, probably because of log on or some issue with the domain, the domain controller, the, uh, the operating system is not going to connect them to their existing local profile and instead will give them a temporary. So that's usually a problem when they get a temporary, when they get a temporary profile, that's not good. They're very, they are going to be very unhappy when they log off. Everything that is created will be deleted. So this usually is where you're going to see a help desk call in local profiles. There are always some folders with some special purposes. We're going to take a look at some of those. There are a couple of folders in each local profile that are very critical. One is called the default and the other is called public. We're going to drill down and look at these two very strategic uh, uh, folders that are used by the profile system, the multi-user system to uh, 